just waiting for my checks to clear from Carlos Slim and Benjamin Netanyahu. Okay, we're good. This is Common Filth Radio, episode 92. Thank you very much for listening. If you want to throw a few pesos my way, commonfilthradio.bandcamp.com. Go there and buy the new episode of Common Filth Extra, episode 24. On this episode, I talk about Angry Birds, Hunter S. Thompson, Richard Nixon, and a very disturbing conspiracy theory that has uh, captured my imagination for quite some time, and I talk about it for the first time on Common Filth Extra, episode 24. So, if all that interests you, one dollar or more, and it is yours. And as always, the link to my band camp, where you can get it, and you can get it only there, is below. So I have a lot planned for this episode, and we'll start here on Ask FM, because apparently... Uh, people still send me stuff through AskFM, even though I don't link to it anymore. So I checked it out of curiosity this week, and I have some stuff here. This one says, Your opinion on the Manosphere and white nationalist movements using evolution to explain everything. I think it undermines both. If evolution is true, women are going to be strong and independent someday, and genetics determine you instead of training and values. Thanks, and fuck the character limit. Well, this is why you send me emails or you send me comments through Reddit, the question and comment thread. Um, yeah, there are some things that evolution can't explain, and, and there are some blind spots with regard to it. Blind spots you pointed out in your comment here. The, uh, if evolution is true, women are going to be strong and independent someday, and genetics determine you instead of training and values. Well, genetics, they, they determine some of you, but certainly not all. But I do see some things happening in humans. I do see some changes happening in humans, uh, specifically white people. The polarity of the sexes are reversing. You can observe this in the Penis Envy episode of Tumbleristas that I uploaded in the last month. Go check that out if you haven't yet. Not now, after. After you're done listening to this. And uh, this week I saw uh, a Swedish chick in one of my friend's uh, comments on Facebook. She She's she's like, oh, what's wrong with this? And, and it was about pegging, you know, where girls have this, this, this thing dangling between their legs and they use it to sodomize men. So if this is the next step in human evolution where men have pussy envy and women have penis envy, no one benefits. This is dysgenic. This is devolution. Women want a dick. They think they should have a dick because of how they feel. Great. You're still five foot two and a hundred pounds. What are you going to do with it? You, you, are you going to go fight the uh, barbarians at the gate? Are you? Are you going to do that? You going to win? You going to win? All right. Go for it. Taking a sip of water here. Would you rather live in Kingston, Jamaica or Portland, Oregon? <laughs> okay, if we're going to come up with these stupid, impossible scenarios for ourselves, because are Kingston, Jamaica and Portland, Oregon, are, are they bordering cities? You know, I'm not too good at geography, but... I think the, those two places are pretty far apart. And it's not as if I work for some company or, or somebody's offering me a job where, where they're telling me, they're sending me an email. Hey, guy who makes all these cool podcasts and videos, we're going to offer you a job. Would you rather go work in Portland, Oregon or Kingston, Jamaica? Is there a company that has that in common? It is Do I have a skill set that could be of use for some corporation like that? I don't think so. But I don't know if you're a man or a woman. Um, I know who sent this, but the uh, this is pretty inconclusive as to who it is. I'm going to assume you're you're a male. I mean, 90% of my audience is. So if we're going to play these stupid, pointless, oh, what if uh, games, I'll ask you this. Would you rather have sex with a black woman or a white man? I'm assuming that you're a guy. You see, I could twist your arm into uh, into answering that question, but the way you'd answer it would probably make you <laughs> a queer. See, if I answered Kingston, Jamaica, living around black people, that, that doesn't change me. That, that, doesn't, that doesn't defile me. And this is how I'm going to respond whenever this stupid question is asked of me. I'm going to ask them if they are, you know, white males prove, trying to prove to me how, how much better white liberals are. I'm going to ask them, would you rather have sex with a black woman or a white man? And that will prove everything I've ever said about this corner of the internet. 
you know, the fashy, we're so fashy corner of the internet. So much of my assertions about it have been proven true, but uh, using this question, uh, I'll find out who stands where. We'll, we'll figure it out for sure. We'll get a good idea of the percentage and how disproportionately abomination it is. Uh, I don't, I know I'm not using that word right. Anyway, we have more here. Hey, CF, I love your show and wish you the best. Anyway, after I listened to your previous episode, I thought hard about the right wing and conservatism and why it is compromised. Conservatives today seem like the liberals of yesterday. Yes, and they always will be because they seek to conserve liberalism. And the right and far right seem like no exception. It seems too, uh, too many have put aside traditional values and ignored degeneracy as long as the perpetrators are white. I went on 8 chance poll and made the thread. It got bump locked and the next one I made got me a ban. It's taboo to call faggots faggots and degenerates degenerates as long as they're right wing. What does that even mean? What does it even mean anymore? The movement for white anti-culturalism is compromised. Since many smoke weed, don't have problems with premarital sex, and are white. Degenerates in another skin. Anyway, thanks a lot, CFO. We, uh, I'm going to read another another post here. Not, not a post, but a story about white suicides and drug abuse. This is all they have to live for, really. Think about it. What are they doing? They're not leaving the house. They're not rubbing elbows with the common person. They live in these strange bubbles where they're bored and they get into very strange things. They become interested in very strange things like traps and, and weed. Weed is more common. You find this everywhere, regardless of fringe ideological stripe. But you know, what is the thread you made say? Not found. Oh, well, the link is broken, so not going to read it. But yeah, I mean, I've you, you see this among... The left wing, the right wing, the new right, the internet right wing intelligentsia. So there has to be something else going on. There has to be another common denominator because politics certainly is not that common denominator. And what is that common denominator? Well, as you get closer to the root of the problem, as you call that demon by its correct name, that demon starts to freak out. It does very strange things. Uh, hello, common filth, beloved enemy of all. <laughs> Look, I just, I'm in one of these moods where I, I don't see much good in, in anybody because I've been let down. I've been let down by a lot of different groups. I thought one person's good. I thought I was good, but you know, I've said some things I've regretted, but I got sidetracked. Hello, common filth, beloved enemy of all. Clearly, you know, the sins of the alt-right, natural aristocracy, anime, and Asian girls. Well, I think anime and Asian girls are the least of their concerns. <laughs> what should we do if we have a different problem, like being attracted to black and Hispanic girls? High sex drive fights depression, but leads to seeking big butts. <laughs> Look, like I said before, I, I asked the question of, of the, the fella who asked you, would you rather leave in Kingston or Portland? Okay, would you rather have a sex with a black chick or, or a white dude? You know, if I'm assuming you're male. Not you specifically, but you, you know what I'm talking about. High sex drive fights depression, but leads to seeking big butts. <laughs> Am I really supposed to be that concerned that you're attracted to the opposite sex? Unlike so many of these other creeps. And then somebody sent me something in Arabic. Ooh, we gotta go to uh, we gotta go to Google Translate now. I'm curious. Translate. All right, let's see what this says. This is nonsense. Why? Why? It says the Weber Hay, Feghali Lai, WWW, Yonkaz, Clenching Waller. This is. Thanks for wasting my time. By any chance, are you part of the BGG group? I'm not telling you what I'm a part of and what I'm not part of. Though I have been, uh, I have been very interested in Brody culture recently, and it's just as gay as the alt right is. <laughs> so anybody that that fixates on thoughts and how evil women are, you're you're just like one step away from from doing something that God destroyed an entire city over oh let me guess from the uh, wikipedia christians well god god destroyed them because they were greedy god destroyed them because they're greedy oh is there a uh, is there hiv for greedy people 
Those who hoard material wealth. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. That's news to me. Oh, what else? One, are you actually Mexican? Nah, you know what? I, I'll, I'll stop there. I, I'm going to backtrack a little bit. I'm going to talk about the uh, recent revival of oh, anti-feminist. We don't like feminists. I thought we were done with that. I thought 2014, the year fe the feminists lost to the debate. I thought we were done. thought we were going to move on from that. But apparently, since some some queer guy is going around to universities talking about it, everybody cares about it again all of a sudden. Yeah, half-decade-old anti-feminist talking points. And is, isn't it interesting how all the anti-feminists still believe all the shit that feminists believe? And gay anti-feminists, they just don't like women because they think girls have cooties. They never advanced in beyond that, that phase of their development because it got stunted by something and... You know, it happened, something happened at a certain age that caused them to uh, keep feeling a certain type of way. One, are you actually Mexican? You know, I've, I've seen some stuff accusing me, <laughs> some stuff on the internet out there accusing me of being Mexican and being autistic and <laughs> because of some jokes, jokey stuff I put on Twitter. You know, there's a difference between being, being joking and being ironic because today's irony is tomorrow's sincerity irony being it, nowadays look how serious i'm being about my not seriousness it's just banter by the way my uh oh i i got a qt red pill trap gf now haha -ha. oh yeah i was i was being ironic bro no i'm i'm getting hiv from a trap i'm falling for the trap trap ironically you know, three years ago, I was posting on anonymous image boards about boy pussy, and now, oh, I got HIV from a trap. Oh, I was just being ironic, though. Give me a break. You're not fooling me. You know, meme magic, I know you, you a lot of you believe this, but you're trying to meme my skin color darker, and it's not going to work. It's not like I can be ironic about the color of my skin or, or my race. Again, I could go get a genetic piss test. I can post it on here for all of you, but I'll get accused of forgery. So I'll be wasting money in, in two different ways. And what would it change if I, if I were actually some sort of Hispanic or mestizo? What would it change if I were La Raza? White people talk shit about black people all the time. Does it make it wrong or right because a white person's saying it? See, I was under the impression that the truth was the truth, no matter who spoke it. And about who? But apparently only white people are allowed to talk about things and, and have them be true. See, if I really were La Raza, and I'm saying the stuff I'm saying about the present state of Western civilization, I, the, the stuff I'm saying about European civilization, all of it would still be true. All of it would still be true. And I like to say I'm not a prophet. And shout out to the uh, the people at our Radio Free Skyrim, I believe. Um, I, I heard uh, that, that they were talking about me, and um, I appreciate it, so shout out to them. But I'm not a prophet. I'm not unveiling hidden truths. I mean, they, they might be slightly obscured, but it's not like I'm getting this from God himself. For example, girls fornicating with dogs. With their dogs. That's a trend on the rise. That's something I said last year. I saw something I just said out of out of passion. I don't remember what what uh, prompted me to say this, but I said there's a hidden epidemic of girls having sex with dogs, and some months after that, everybody started catching on. But uh, even before that, uh, it was even more than one year ago, probably like three, two, three, something like that, four. I think like three or four years ago, I was watching television with my sister and MTV was on and a Miley Cyrus TV special comes off as some kind of concert, TV concert. And there's one segment in the concert where this horse puppet comes out and she's making vaguely sexual motions at it, gestures at it. <laughs> and right there, I, I, I knew uh, bestiality. That's the next big thing that, that's going to get a push. And that's what happened. It existed. I observed it, stored it in the, the memory bank, at least somewhere in there. Didn't, didn't have too much priority, but as time goes on, it gets, it gets moved to the front.
What I'm saying is that these assessments I'm making don't come out of the blue. It's something that exists, something I observe, a pattern that, that I see that maybe not a lot of other people are seeing, and I talk about it. And that's it. So what else do we have on Ask FM? What exactly makes you think an age of consent of 14 is indicative of a moral death? There are no biological reasons to oppose it other than a higher risk of birth mishaps. No psychological other than a victim is abused. No religious reasons I've heard of. And moral reasons are derived from these. You are retarded. And you are a, you need to be put into prison. And this is something I talked about on Twitter, which uh, made me realize that I'm not going to use Twitter so much anymore. I'm just going to use it to, uh, to tell you when stuff is available. Some wise guy said, well, Mary was 14 when she gave birth to Christ. Yes, she was a virgin. She is a virgin. We don't know the precise age that she gave birth, birth to the Christ child, but she was a virgin. Immaculate conception. Not something white people can do. Which leads it, me into this next comment that I got. Say, uh, the same person trying to get me in a gotcha, saying like, oh, for, there's no reason why 14-year-olds can't birth Aryan Ubermensch. What, do you think you're God? Yes, I, I'm, I'm strawmanning people so much. You, <laughs> these people really do think of themselves as gods. People bitch at me. You're strawmanning us. You're strawmanning this, this movement. Not really. When I get responses like this, <laughs> this, this impulse, this autotheistic impulse that you have for some reason exists. And this impulse, and if this impulse isn't real, this autotheistic impulse that, that these, these certain groups of white nationalists have, white supremacists have, why are you sending this to me? I get it, you don't like me, but your pride, your sense of self-worth in taking down a D-list internet celebrity, that's your source of self-worth to prove me wrong somehow? And by doing that, you are saying some very disturbing things? That's why pride is a sin. I found this comment here on, on an unrelated website unrelated to any conversation, unrelated to me, just something I saw. It says people will literally stand for something just to piss off the people who oppose it, even if they don't really believe in what they are backing. And what I just said, that's a perfect description. Listen to yourself and, and what you're becoming. What exactly makes you think an age of consent is 14? Oh, 14 year olds need to birth our Aryan Ubermensches. Straight out of uh, amazing atheist interviews he has with uh, certain right-wing internet personalities. What exactly? This person asked me, "What exactly makes you think an age of consent of fourteen is indicative of moral death?" Have you have you met a fourteen-year-old that you thought was capable of being a wife and a mother, being uh, being capable of carrying that burden, that burden of sexual activity? which is heavily, heavily psychologically impactful. Do you actually interact with people? Do you step outside of your four walls away from your computer, breathe in the air, walk around, look around? Do you? Do you? If you think 14-year-olds are capable of all of this, you, I, I don't think you do. And if you sincerely hold this belief, that age of consent, 14, just fine. You need to be put in jail. To catch a predator, alt-right, I hate common filth contrarian, so I'm going to say a bunch of crazy shit edition. Hi, uh, here's another one. This is brilliant. Kind of, uh, <laughs> it's like poetry. Hi, I am writing this ask because I would like advice. I am a 15-year-old female and have been listening and enjoying you for around two months. The advice I want is that I think I have feelings for the same sex and I know that this is wrong. What should I do? No, you, you say you think you have. You don't know you have. You think you have. So it's something else. You are a narcissistic maggot. You are a human maggot. You don't know what your feelings are. You cry for no reason. You, you go through all these crazy ups and downs because you're still pretty early on in puberty. But I don't know. I'm not some sociopath that looks at my fellow man as a, a potential cum dumpster, unlike uh, certain heroes of certain 
fringe ideological movements do. We read that study. Uh, well, is 48% of British youth identify as not completely heterosexual? I believe it. I believe it. I think it's not just British youth either, but um, the the spawn of Japheth in general would seem to be the next to go, right? Happens to everybody. Uh, I got this one from some shirtless weirdo. If whites are the most degenerate race, then how come homosexuality rates and transgender rates are higher among non-whites? Well, the previous statement I made before that one contradicts a lot. Look, I'm familiar with the polls. Oh, look, there we're only 3% uh, gay, you know, and other other people are 4% gay. Does it, does it not occur to you that white people are a lot better at lying and, and twisting and spinning the truth? How many 20-something dipshits have communications degrees? where it qualifies them for a career in public relations. Lying. So we're all our little, own little PR agents, and, you know, when the pollster asks, do you, um, do you like to engage in reckless sexual behavior? Some people, they, they pause. They're like, wait, yeah, I do, but I feel, I feel shame now that I'm confronted with it. So they say, oh, no. But, you know, technically, behind closed doors, they'll, they'll tell British pollsters, well, I'm not completely heterosexual. But look, we'll assume that the poll numbers are accurate, that 3% of whites are this and 4% and of non-whites are this. I've never used this angle. Well, this is X is more than Y. I've never used that angle to justify my statements about how Western nations are far more predisposed towards abominations than other nations. So I'm going to use this as an example. This came uh, from the New York Times back in... December, U.S. support of gay rights in Africa may have done more harm than good. And it's a great story. I recommend everybody check this out. Just Google U.S. support of gay rights in Africa may have done more harm than good. Google that. Uh, you'll find it. I typed in gay rights backfire Africa, and uh, that's the, this came up. So you'd search for that as well if I forget to link to it. And so um, I'm going to there's one. I'm not going to read the whole thing here. Here we go. Since 2012, the United States um, or United States officials said the American government has spent more than 41 million dollars specifically to promote gay rights globally, along with a portion of 700 million dollars earmarked for marginalized groups to support gay communities and causes. Let that sink in. More than half of the $700 million and 6.6 .6 million of the $41 million was spent on sub-Saharan Africa, just one indication of the continent's importance to the new policy. And stop, stop right now, stop writing that comment. You need to listen. I know what you're going to say. Well, America has the Obama administration. Barack Obama's black. Barack Obama is half black, half white. Uh, and Dunham, predominantly of English ancestry, with some German, Swiss, Scottish, Irish, and Welsh ancestry. Irish. Let's, let's talk about the Irish. Huge Republic of Ireland vote for gay marriage. Republic of Ireland has voted overwhelmingly to legalize same-sex marriage in a historic referendum. More than 62% in favor of amending the country's constitution to allow gay and lesbian couples to marry. So, were they the first? They were the first, weren't they? Yeah, Ireland becomes the first country to legalize gay marriage by popular vote. Tell me how many African nations have done the same. Half of Barry Sotoro comes from that. You have a continent full of black heads of state. How many of them are spending uh, money on promoting gay rights globally? How many of them are putting uh, uh, sham marriages up to popular vote? What about the ballerina? Uh, Justin Trudeau, is that his name? Marching in, you know, uh, running, running gleefully down the, uh, down the road at the gay pride parade in Canada. Justin Trudeau, prime minister of Canada. This is who Canada chose to lead them. And this is how he's behaving. He's behaving like a, a molestation victim who makes an identity out of it. What else? Amster. Oh, here we go. This is, this is a fantastic one here. 
Loading. Amsterdam to fly gay rainbow flag during Russian President Vladimir Putin's visit. This was back in 2013. And um, I, I used to uh, know this one fella. And he, he was a father, married guy, married to a woman, had two children. He's like, ooh, go, go Netherlands. Done. Bye. Bye. Bye bye. White guy, too. It's always the white guys. Talking about how how oh I'm I'm such a great ally for the LGBT always and they 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 have kids and this is the shit they're promoting. That's homophobic, bro. That's hate speech, bro. You know I ne- I never hear anybody else qualifying their statements with well I support X Y Z but this is just going too far. You take down your own flags. The Dutch people take down their own flags, at least in one city. Amsterdam, isn't that their capital? Or one of their largest cities, at least? They took down their own flags and put up rainbow flags, telling you what the priorities of the Dutch people are. So don't give me this bullshit about whites being less of this. Because I've lost count of the amount of white people I've known, and have since cut off contact with, that promote this garbage. And this leads us to, in The Wages of Sin is news, deaths of despair drag life expectancy lower for whites. New York, from the Associated Press, AP.org, rising drug and alcohol overdoses, suicides, and disease from chronic alcoholism labeled deaths of despair by one expert are cutting the lives of white Americans short by nearly half a year on average. Increases in these types of deaths among whites means that life expectancy for whites whites is not increasing as fast as it is for other groups, according to a government report that offers an unusual look at how different threats are affecting U.S. lifespans. Things are moving in the wrong direction, said Anne Case, a Princeton University researcher of what she calls deaths of despair. Drawing from death certificate data, the new report from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention focuses on what will happen to to white life expectancy between 2000 and 2014. The work was a reaction to a recent research that suggested drug overdoses and suicides have caused alarming rates, uh, alarming increases in death rates for middle-aged white Americans. The new report, which did not perform the same analysis for blacks and Hispanics, was posted online Friday. Overall, white life expectancy still grew because other things were improving. Deaths from heart disease, the nation's number one killer, dropped significantly, and that alone added a year to white life expectancy. Nearly one more year was added because of falling death rates from cancer, stroke, and motor vehicle crashes, the researchers found. But then drugs and alcohol subtracted about four months from life expectancy, according to Kenneth Kochenek, a CDC statistician, a statistician rather, who is the report's lead author. No other cause of death had a bigger impact, bigger negative impact, he said. Increasing suicides had the second largest negative impact, uh, subtracting roughly six weeks from life expectancy. The growing impact of Alzheimer's disease was third, reducing longevity about three weeks. Well, the, the second death comes after the first death. Rising suicide rates, declining, declining life expectancies, declining demographics. They're all representations of that first death, the spiritual death. Whoa, you're telling me that that gay people in Disney cartoons isn't a source of hope? What, you're telling me that? No, no, that's homophobic, bro, says every fucking sorority. No, yeah, sorority boys. I'm going to call them sorority boys. In first death news, in pause load news, from 9news.com, surgical tech caught switching syringe tests for a positive for HIV. Surgical tech caught switching syringes tests positive for HIV. Denver, the surgical tech who prompted blood disease testing of thousands of patients has tested positive for HIV and negative for hepatitis B and C. Oh, well, at least, at least he's negative. Hepatitis negative. No, that's, that's great. You got, you got something going for you. Your, your hepatitis negative but HIV positive. No. The U.S. attorney in Colorado announced the results of Rocky Allen's blood testing. What do you look like? Rocky Allen. Copy, paste, search. 
Oh, look at this guy. He's, he's a blonde-haired ubermensch. And um, he's got a fashy haircut. He's got a fashy haircut. Okay, what? Well, we need to read more. Uh, what a psycho. Okay, to date, there have been no reported cases of transmission of HIV, much to Rocky Allen's disappointment. Allen is facing federal charges after he was caught stealing the highly addictive drug fentanyl from Swedish Medical Center of Colorado. <laughs> oh, God. Don't get me started on that, because I saw some other shit about fentanyl overdoses and and you know, all the uh, drug use amongst these crazy... Never mind. I'm not going to get into it. Just something I saw. Uh, indicative of more dysfunction, but I don't need to beat you over the head with it. Investigators believe Allen may have switched needles he used to inject the drugs with needles used in operating rooms on patients. Swedish announced free blood testing for approximately 3,000 patients potentially affected by the incident. About 2,500 have taken advantage of the testing. 500 who were initially tested have not followed up on the recommended additional testing. I usually have some pretty interesting details buried uh, down here at the end of these articles. Uh, oh, oh, this is nice. Uh, Nine Wants to Know has investigated Allen's troubled medical career in which he was repeatedly hired and fired by several hospitals after he was caught stealing fentanyl. Or uh, fentanyl. Yeah, fentanyl, right? Is that how it's said? Who cares? Regardless, dysfunction begets dysfunction, and there you go. What else? Oh, here, here's another one in uh, in first death news from the sun.co.uk. Around the world in 80 lays, traveler who bonked her way out of heartbreak after split with long-term boyfriend. Writer swapped sightseeing for international orgy of meaningless sex with locals. Okay, then. Heartbroken after being dumped, Laura Jane Williams indulged her passion for traveling, but instead of sightseeing, she immersed herself in local culture by sleeping with countless men. Well, at least they're being honest now about why they like to travel. The 30-year-old rider from Derby went on a sex spree in Europe, America, and the UK, detailed in her book, Becoming, until her bed hopping came to a sudden and bizarre end. Well, now I have to keep reading. I could not go to the pub, a party, or work event without looking at a man and saying to myself, that one will be the next. There always had to be somebody to take home, a conquest. I felt like an emotionally detached and liberated woman. By... Engaging in vice slavery. Slavery really is freedom, guys. My need for meaningless sex started after my long-term boyfriend dumped me and within a year got engaged to my friend. We had been dating for six years and I fell off the rails. Well, this guy's a piece of shit. Let's, let's not get it twisted here. Single mothers could not exist if it weren't for men... Men who are average retards, average retards who live only to stick their dick into something new every other week. If you're a man who's a part of our natural aristocracy, it's far more frequent than that. But yeah, we wouldn't have these problems if restraint were exercised. So she said, we had been dating for six years and I fell off the rails. After he left that day, I drank a half bottle of vodka within 45 minutes, had thrown it all back up again. The heartache made me want to go and be someone else for a while. That's the stu- Every time I wanted to be someone else, you're still the same person! You're no one different! You're, you're dealing with your problems gracelessly. That's not being somebody else. God. In a fit of spontaneity, I fled to Paris to visit a friend and had my first post-heartache sexual encounter with a hot Frenchman at a party in an apartment. Raphael made his move out outside on the stairs. I knew, at that mo I knew that at any moment somebody could walk out of the apartment, but as he pulled down my leggings, I suddenly no longer minded that only a single door separated us from the party. Despite our semi-naked antics, he refused to have sex, saying, No thanks, French girls don't do that. What? It didn't put me off men, though. The rejection didn't have to hurt. Men could be interchangeable. One man was never enough. Peers, colleagues, strangers, and friends were all potential lovers. 
Within an hour of returning home, I'd found another conquest and was on the beginning of an adventure. I planned my next liaison via the internet. An obvious choice now, but uncharted territory for booty call back in 2009, I chose dating website OKCupid to meet Jay the DJ. 35 minutes later, after meeting at a bar, he was soaring me down on a travel lodge bed, hitching up my dress. I was pulled up at zips, belts, and buttons with frantic whispers, and then just like that, I was naked with a man who was not my ex-boyfriend. Unfortunately, the action was all over in 60 seconds. Turns out there's no etiquette for, etiquette for such encounters. You have to, in my experience, have soul-crushingly mismatched sex four times until 6.30 a.m. brings it with a spate of new friction burns that will take a pot of pseudocreme to soothe. After which you can finally say, I've got an early breakfast meeting to get to. Uh, I'll text you. And this is what we have to live for. So I wonder why we're all abusing drugs and, and um, killing ourselves. <laughs> this next part then i landed a stint in america doing writing workshops for eastern michigan university and high schools in detroit that's when i fell for 18 year old chad who i like to take control of in the bedroom i wanted him to come over almost every night i got antsy when he didn't text and if he took too long to initiate sex i'd get weird The state of our culture. Six weeks after we started sleeping together, I saw him with a blonde. By the time he got to my apartment, minutes later, I had worked myself into a frenzy. I opened the door, pulled him into my bedroom, and threw him down on the bed. Straddling him, I said, I want you to fuck me hard like I am your whore, okay? Fuck me and don't stop. This is a sane woman. Very, very good example. She's, she'll, um, she'll have lots of nice babies that will, uh, yeah, that, this isn't, this is Genix. Maybe it's the birth control making her crazy. Uh, my sexual exploits didn't stop there. When I got back from the U.S., there were a lot of men in quick succession. Uh, back in Derby, and during some teaching over the summer in Italy, uh, it's always teachers. I'm going to teach. I'm going to teach abroad. Teaching abroad is code for. I got to slow down. And I am slowing down with this wonderful cup of water. Mmm. That's refreshing, unlike uh, what this woman's doing. Back in Derby and during some teaching over the summer in Italy, I threw myself into promiscuity, partly out of shame and partly because it felt good. Shame? By adding, by adding more shame to it? <laughs> Reassuring to remember I could be in control. My next stop was back in Italy and more men. Uh... One was a teacher. I'd borrow the key to the school we worked in for the week, and we'd sneak in after dar dark and shit on the desks. It's it's S star star yeah S star star star. It's censoring something. Why? Why? Then there was a big D, so called because he was endowed with the largest unruliest exhaust pipe of a thing I'd ever encountered. This is a wonderful publication. Great publication. Great example of uh, Western journalism here. Men loved the pursuit, and I could make them think it was their idea. Being with them helped me feel to in helped me fe to feel in control. I pulled one man in a bar while carrying a tray of greasy chips. Another was a 19-year-old father of one who I had sex with every night for a month. I treated him like dirt, and when I ended it, he chased me down his road in his pajamas to tell me he loved me. Another fine example, except it's the, the men who are the fine example now. A 19-year-old father of one. Oh, and he had kids. This beta bitch had kids. Or at least one. He had a kid. Then I found some work in the university and went on a training weekend during which I had added another conquest to my list. At 1 a.m. I knocked on the door of a fellow trainee I'd had my eye on and said, Hello, I've been watching you and I think you should pay me a visit in my room, room 342. Uh, he said, I'll be right there. Women were not off my list either. Of course, of course, it wouldn't be a Japheth demon uh, story without some bicurious experimentation. We had a bizarre, confused relationship for about six weeks, while I was also shitting men. 
I, I hope that's what it... Uh, wait, no. I don't hope. What do these censoring things mean? Why are you censoring it? You're talking about being a depraved whore all around the world and and this publication... Oh, we, can't, we have to censor out the naughty words. We had a bizarre, confused relationship. I'm sure you did. Boy, we are just... <laughs> culture it revolved around her being able to do whatever she wanted to me yet and yet i never saw her naked not once i wasn't allowed to touch her functional i started to pride myself on keeping everyone at a distance i was a slut because oh it's slut slut i I get it why are you censoring slut but wait no that last one it says shitting men because it says sh star 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 ing So, shit, shitting is bad, and slut is bad. So she says, I started to pride myself on keeping everyone at a distance. I was a slut because none of them was the answer. I didn't want any of them to love me or treat me with respect because I didn't respect myself. I was teaching English to Italian teenagers when I finally realized I was on a destructive path and decided to change my life. So I signed up to live in an an Italian convent. I moved to Chiostro di San... St. Agostino, near the seaside town of Luano in the Riviera. I thought it was a covenant with a convent with nuns, but it was actually a monastery with elderly monks who took me in and helped me recover. I vowed to be celibate while I was there. It was amazing, the perfect place to heal and reflect. After my wild years of being in such a slow, easy place made me consider life. Uh, it was just what I needed. The doors were pretty much open to anybody who needed a bed. People would bring gifts for the monks and ask for help. I did too. It was mainly Romanians or Southern Italians down on their luck. I spoke with them all. Oh, now now you're a virtue. Now you're so virtuous. And it maps out her whore trip. God. This is... I don't care about your, your living in your convent. I don't care. I don't care about becoming Laura Jane Williams. Sex, sex, and chances, and figuring out who the hell I am. <sighs> All right, moving on. In male aesthetic news, balls up are scrotal lifts the next trend in male grooming. Who's looking at your balls? Who's looking at your balls and saying, they're too low, mate. They're too low. I can't banter banter with this. Oi. Is this like a bodybuilder thing? Where, uh, Where bodybuilding tournaments, we all know they're nothing but meat markets for old weird queers. Like, ooh, beat me up and let me feel up on your muscles. That's all bodybuilding is. We know, we know that. Anybody fixated on the male ascetic is, is a complete dork and, and a deviant. So this is from The Telegraph by Lee Canaston, I think is how it's said. About four years ago, during a slightly drunken conversation in which I was quizzed by a pal about what the next big thing in male grooming was, for since I write about the subject... For a living. For my sins, I write about the subject for a living. And who are you? Oh, you have a website called Grooming Guru? Oh, kill yourself. I replied mischievously that it was for ball lifts. You've heard about women having a little tidying up downstairs, tidying up downstairs, right? Well, this is the male equivalent, I said, as he fiddled nervously with the change inside his trouser pocket. Man, I explained, sick of slack scrotums and testicles, inconveniently separated by boxer seams, were lining up to have their low hangers permanently lifted. Really? Balls to that, he exclaimed with a huge guffaw, and we both rolled about laughing. Now, let me tell you something here. It is time for an anatomy lesson. I know I know, none of you are, are wanting this, but it needs to be said, because we're, we're reading this, the testicles... You know, that, that part of the male anatomy, right? It, you know, the ball, the, the testicles, the balls, ball lifts, scrotal lifts, you got to understand. The scrotum containing the testicles, it needs to be elastic, for lack of a better word, to uh, adapt to changes in body temperature to keep the sperm inside the testicles living. But no, let's fuck with that, too. No, let's, let's fuck with it. Man in man's image, that's great. No, that, that leads to great things. That's not dysfunctional. Man is not a rebellious creature who is not fit to create and mold himself in his own image. And yeah, that's, that's just religious uh, claptrap. Shut up, CF. Quit talking about religion. 
Now, you could talk about your religion, your religion where you worship balls and want want to preserve your balls in your own image. You could talk about that, but I can't talk about mine without uh, every sort of grief you can imagine. It was a fantasy, of course, an infantile joke that was the product of a red wine haze. Except it wasn't, because in 2016, the ball lift, a.k.a. a scrotal uplift, a.k.a. a scrotoplasty, is a bona fide thing, seriously. Where in the past, such procedures were almost exclusively performed to correct abnormalities or to restore the scrotum to its normal self after injury or cancer. But now this most intimate of procedures is being performed for purely aesthetic reasons. Clearly no longer content with worrying about the state of their ears and rears, men are now worried about... Wait, rears? Oh, great. Not, uh, uh, our dudes... Dudes getting ass jobs now, <sighs> but men uh, men are now worried their balls have gone a bit bag puss, baggy and a bit loose at the seams. Uh, Perhaps we shouldn't be surprised with statistics from the British Association of Aesthetic Plastic Surgeons, British, showing that the number of men undergoing cosmetic procedures has more than doubled in the past 10 years to over 4,500 a year. Now, is this covered in the uh, National Health Service? Like, uh, like tranny surgery is, I'm, I'm sure it will be. No, wait, no, you know, it might be too heteronormative or patriarchal to, to do surgeries about balls, unless you're giving balls to a lady in which it's in, ca in that case, it's a human right and it's transphobic. If you, if you don't, uh, it was only a matter of time before moob reductions and beard transplants became old hat and men looked towards another part of their anatomy to modify Pioneering the ball lift in the UK, along with London Bridge Plastic Surgery and Aesthetic Clinic, is the Bella Lou, oh God, Pant Pant Pantiles, Pantilles, I don't give a fuck how to pronounce this shit, Bella Lou Clinic, or Bella Vu Clinic, which of all places in Tunbridge, Tunbridge Wells, a town clearly not, if you'll excuse the pun, as uptight as reputation would have it, their cosmetic plastic surgeon, Amir, uh, Knock, knock, I don't know. I'm not reading this anymore. What, did George Clooney get one? George Clooney spoke of the less extreme ball ironing in 2013. Oh, of course he would be into that. Yeah, I'm, I'm done with this. There are some other things I left out that are, that's in my episode folder here. Common filth is an anti-racist, anti-white Jew faggot. If you don't like me, if you don't like what I do, if you've turned against me, why are you still here? Why are you leaving comments on my shit? It's like a very womanly, clingy girlfriend kind of vibe I'm getting here. It's very creepy. You should move on with your life. Oh, here's another one. We got well, we got this comment on one of the Vine marathons from a magical uh, white girl. Why don't we all just maybe, hmm, I don't know, let them live their lives? Like, what the actual fuck? Do, do you have nothing better to do than hate on these people who are expressing their frustrations with people and their opinions? Like, I get that it's cringy, that it's cringy, but really? Are you fucking kidding me? Act your age, please, and stop bringing Hitler and Nazis into this. That needs to stop right now. That's fucking terrible to say. Even for people like you who like you all. Hitler is not something to wish back, and that's fucking sick. Now, act your age and shut the fuck up, and yes, I probably used the word, uh, used the wrong there. Oops. What are you saying? These people are not just living their lives, they're putting something out in public, they're they're doing these things, these self-destructive behaviors, they're putting them on full display, and here are the opinions resulting from that lifestyle. And people find it horrible. They can't find the words to describe why it's horrible, but they know it is on a visceral level. So and then the whining about Hitler, yeah, that Hitler thing is kind of passe at this point, like mm, Hitler, Hitler did nothing wrong. Uh what else? Oh, here's one that was sent uh, to me from a friend of mine. This is a uh, Facebook group, I think. Uh, Politics and Sociology. And, um, well, I'm just going to read it. It's a picture, and the caption is this. The caption is this. Trans girls are socialized male, so they have male expectations of women in terms of gender roles, when they become girls, they start acting like girls men actually want. If you want a loyal companion who takes responsibility, seeks to reassure your insecurities slash love you, date a trans girl or man. <laughs> and 
And then this this guy with an Irish last name, I think. I love them. They're the best. The polarities really have reversed when it comes to the sexes, uh, the sexes in white people. And 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 people are asking me like rhetorically, like, oh, would you rather live in Kingston or would you rather live in Portland? I want to live amongst a bunch of emasculated people who you think are superior because they don't commit crimes. They commit crimes against nature. They commit crimes against God. Let's read that last part again, because this is what I'm talking about. The polarities of the the sexes have reversed amongst whites, um, you know, most most noticeably. If you want a loyal companion who takes responsibility seeks to reassure your insecurities slash love you, date a trans girl or man. If you are a man, you don't have insecurities that need reassurance. But these aren't men. They're males. New males. Date a trans girl or man who seeks to reassure your insecurities. No, that's that's what women do. They have the insecurities that <coughs> that men... That men say, it's okay, honey. It'll all be okay. That's that's our job. But no, now it's our job to be the insecure ones and trans girls need to sue them. It's just, it's this is a, we're a mess. <laughs> like I still like to say, death by a thousand cuts, this represents a couple of dozen of them. A few of the other cuts we talked about um, at the beginning of this episode. People who are emblems of their own people's decline. Sending me messages trying to convince me, no, no, we're actually, this is actually good. It's good for us. So we'll go to the subreddit, r slash common filth. I can move my um, microphone here. Oh, I can't. Nah, it's a little bit of noise. Move my microphone stand. All right, r slash common filth on reddit.com. Join the conversation from the uh, question comment thread for Common Filth Radio episode 92. What is it about these social justice types and Disney? Why do they want to push social agendas in kids' movies? Can't I just enjoy Disney movies without a social agenda with gay or fur faggotry? No, because you're dealing with perpetual children here who never grew up. They watched Little Mermaid. They watched uh, The Lion King. And that's how they learned. They they learned their, their moral messages from those movies and... Combine this with the rampant promotion of buggery within the education industrial complex, and you have a you have a, a strange amalgamation of things. People that never grew up, people who think that that homosexuality, sodomy, is the preferable act, and and there you go. Would this be a problem if Goyim actually took an interest in raising their kids properly? It wouldn't be, or it would be less of one. But here we are. We, we know what has happened. We know how people are. Um, let's see here. Oh, it's pretty simple. If there's nothing wrong with the LGBTQ lifestyle, then why not just show it to children? Are you a Christian bigot? Quit being ironic. It's, it's done. It's, we get it. The opposition is very crazy. Let's start policing our own. We don't need to... You don't need to like adopt the the positions of the other side to make a point anymore. I see if about that one commentator last episode who said you can be good without God has that a visceral level disturbing implications. You touched on it. If you uh, you end up being your own determinant of morality, and we know how that ends up. The problem with this view, the you can hate degeneracy without God, is that he can't justify why he'd rely on the opinion. Okay. Yeah, um, I saw you were having a conversation uh, with the um, with the uh, person that r- wrote in uh, with that. So I, I won't read the entire comment here because really there's not much left I can say. I, I laid all my cards on the table there uh, last week. So, hey, CF, first time commenter here. I'd like to hear some of your thoughts on the subreddit r slash child free. The users there are basically adult children. They all have the freedom of adulthood, but refuse to take on any of the responsibilities. They see people who dedicate their time and resources to their children as inferior to them. I love your radio show and look forward to it every week. Thank for ev- thank you for everything you do, and God bless you. God bless you as well. Yeah, I, I've this just came to my attention. The subreddit, and 
this is this always cracks me up. These people are like, oh, kids, they're kids. People who have kids are stupid. Kids are stupid. Look, I'll be the first person to say that not everyone should have children. <laughs> Very few people are suited towards raising children, as we as we have discovered. And you go on the child free subreddit here, and we're on the side panel of all the information about um, you know, about uh, the how many how many readers they have, how many subscribers they have. It says uh, uh, ninety seven thousand two hundred eighty two jet ski owners, and now right now one hundred ninety happy one hundred ninety nine happy hour enjoying jet ski owners. Okay, kids suck. Whatever in the in the banner here. There's a couple walking on the beach. There's a dog following them. Okay, great. You you didn't have kids, but who makes the jet skis? Who runs the happy hour at the bars and restaurants you enjoy so much? People, people who are the result of childbirth, man and woman getting together doing that thing that makes babies. It's parasitic, and they think it's great, and they think it's a great thing. Oh, look, I'm I'm enjoying all these things. I have such uh, such great amount of free time. If everybody behaved like you, we wouldn't have a species. There would be no happy hour to enjoy. There would be no jet skis. By posting on the subreddit, they're saying this is a preferable behavior. Everyone should do this. And the front page: I got cheated on because he wanted a family. <laughs> <laughs> what do you uh, look it's it's one thing to maybe one of you is infertile and say you know it's just it wasn't in god's plan for us to have children that is gracefully accepting your fate not saying well we don't have kids and it's awesome so you shouldn't either no that's not for you to decide they're fetishizing their lack of children and only in a sick, degenerate society such as ours is, is something like this possible. Everyone pointed and laughed and said, look at the Christ cucks speaking in tongues when Jesus camp came out. Yeah, and we still haven't moved beyond that. That came out in what, 2006, 2007? People are still using the same rhetoric. Oh, dumb Christians. Oh, they're so, so dumb. Look at me. I'm so smart. I'm posting on child free. Now TLC runs a show called Transgender Kids Camp and everyone celebrates as some goony parents shoot up their preteen children, shoot their preteen children up with hormones. Let me get the uh, wording right there, the order of the words. Yeah, I know. It's my the, our, the secular pagan religions are fine, but uh Christianity no, no, no. That's that's a no. People are people are very afraid of uh Christians for some reason. People react very harshly when they figure out what I believe in. And I don't understand. I don't get it. Do you think the banter about alt-right homosexuality among the more sane creatures still caught up in the politics will turn into actual approval of sodomy? Well, it has. In today's irony, tomorrow's sincerity. And it's tomorrow. Longtime fan here. Did you hear about this? I'd be curious to know what are your thoughts about this kind of behavior. Is this another sign that something should be done sometime soon? Just finishing up, uh, finishing episode 91 right now. This is awesome. Thank you very much for all you're doing. Well, thank you very much for listening. And this says, Parents stunned after girl has sex with as many as two dozen boys in school bathroom. Maybe she should write a book about it. Talking about how great it was, and then after that, she joins a, a convent. Teen girl filmed having sex with two dozen football players in school bathroom. This is why you raise your children. Some failed parents, all all of them. And that's all I have to say about it, really. What more can I say? We don't raise our kids. Kids raise themselves now, and, and look how they raise themselves. No, teachers raise kids. Spinster teachers that go on worldwide sexcapades. That's who's ra- that, that, That's the class raising our children. Hello, CF. Thank you for taking a look at the school article I sent you. I can't blame you for not reading it entirely. I didn't even finish it. But anyways, I wanted to share uh, some experiences from an art class at the same school. 
One project I remember is a collage in which we have to talk about an issue. I did mine on war. Pretty generic, just had pictures of tanks and soldiers and you're done. But a girl did a collage in how the evil Christians won't allow her to be a cum dumpster, and she showed off her collage with a lot of pride. Another project we had to do was create a fake society and document them on a book we made. I did mine on an ultra-authoritative uh, alien society. And what shocked my fellow classmates? Not that the alien society destroyed religion and culture. Not that the society controls all means of communication. Not that the alien society massacres their citizens frequently. What does shock them is that the aliens have strict control on the reproductive rights of their females. They also get shocked that the alien society controls what clothes you can wear. They also get shocked at the idea that women are expected to be child bearers. Yeah, they start them early. The uh, the sexual the mechanisms of control are, are are directed through sexuality, and young people they're 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 the horniest. So yeah, they they get real angry if somebody uh, threatens to take away daddy's cummies. <sighs> where where did I leave off? I had to put fake expressions so that they don't turn against me. Who are my classmates? One of them is a Lalbertarian who smokes weed and wears a vest with metal studs and a bad religion t-shirt. Fine parenting there. Excellent job. His face has more metal than a medieval knight has with this helmet. Another is a liberal socialist girl who is a proud LGBTUVWXYZ supporter who is a Buddhist Wiccan. My favorite part about her is her hour-long talks about Ouija boards. I don't listen because of how interesting or spiritually enlightened I am of her. I listen because I am amused by her superstition of the supposed spirits of the Ouija boards. I'll stop here before this wall of text becomes longer. Keep up the good work, CF and God bless. Yeah, children are the future. They are a bleak future. <laughs> Hello, CF. I am a long-time listener to your podcast, but I'm writing you for the first time. Oh, thank you for your patronage. I'm very passionate about filmmaking, and my goal is to start a pause-free film production company at some point in the hopefully near future, as opposed to the alternative, which is to say, falling for the moving out to Hollywood and catching my big break meme. But as a young man who fell victim to the dude divorce in public school LOL meme, I'm merely writing screenplays while wage-slaving as a janitor for the time being. Well, janitor, janitor is much more honest work than... Film producing. I mean, film writing screenplays, you know, that's honest, but as you go further down the line, your vision, the screenwriter's vision, I think gets distorted quite a bit. Uh, it is certainly no secret that the film industry is currently permeated with evil, but I believe that the art of filmmaking itself can be reclaimed by those who aim to promote the good, to tell the truth, to observe and report things as they are, and to create well rounded works of art that provoke thought and, and imagination. I believe the road to reclaiming the art of not only filmmaking, but of all mediums is to not infiltrate and subvert the established institutions, Hollywood, cable television, large record companies, etc., but to create one's own and, or, and grow it proactively. I suppose my question to you is this. Do you think we can take filmmaking back, or at the very least make our own strongholds of virtuous expression free of their influence, or is this an uphill battle not worth fighting? Also, if you haven't seen it, I recommend the film Archie's Final Project, alternatively titled My Suicide, directed by David Lee Miller. It should be mentioned that some of its content is rather offensive and vulgar. Well, so is mine, but, you know, a lot of people see through that. But it manages to showcase the psychological impact of life in 21st century parody world in a rather interesting way, at least from what I can recall, as it's been a, a, quite a while since I've seen it. I mostly mention it because I'm often reminded of it when I watch an episode of Tumblr. He says, with the best of intentions, financially compensated janitor. Creating alternative media is a battle worth fighting, I think. And the, the only hurdle you have is getting exposure to the passive audience. And what I mean by that is people who see a commercial like, oh, that looks good. Or, you know, they go to the theater on Friday night, which I am, uh, I just saw Ninja Turtles, by the way. I just got back from that. Now I'm recording. But the movie theater, it means less nowadays, now that we have Netflix. 
But regardless, you need to find a way to get in front of that passive audience. People who aren't terribly curious, people who don't research obscure filmmakers and people who don't read uh, obscure film blogs, people who aren't who aren't into that. People who don't drive an hour to go to a, a movie that's being shown in only 50 theaters nationwide. And if you think that sounds oddly specific, like a little too specific, it is because I have done that. But if you want to be a ridiculous success, unfortunately, you do have to find a way to get in front of that passive audience. And I just don't know how to do that beyond, um, beyond the scope of mainstream distribution methods. But I don't discourage you from trying to uh, break into the mainstream because some, some things slip through the cracks from time to time. A lot of people argue that the, uh, ang- the new Angry Birds movie that just came out is a red-pilled movie, which I gave my thoughts on uh, that, that whole idea on Common Filth Extra if you're interested. So get that success. Get it any way you can. And I'm rooting for you. Hi, CF. I discovered your content about two weeks ago and have listened to most episodes of Common Filth Radio in that time. I cannot express how glad I was to discover a voice in these circles who broadly shares my worldview. I, like you, am the admin of one of the larger Facebook pages, considered part of the alt-right Earl of Grey if you're interested. Oh, I am interested. I've had your page liked for quite some time, so it is, it is nice to hear from you. And have been doing this since 2013. However, I am becoming increasingly disillusioned with the so-called alt-right, which is full of people who vilify the Christian faith and blame it for the problems of modernity. Yeah, they blame churches for the refugee crisis, despite the fact that it's not the church, it's the EU. Uh, it's, yeah, the church enforces uh, border security. Yeah, okay. Fucking retards. I, as a devout Catholic, feel that I can no longer identify with a movement that gives neo-pagans, anti-Christians, and unrepentant sodomites a platform. Why do you think the alt-right is devolved? Uh, why do you think the alt-right devolved into this? Where is this hostility towards the Christian faith coming from? In my opinion, much of the alt-right these days are just leftists plus race. Yeah, and you see that uh, go back to the beginning of the episode, that, that question about would you rather live in Kingston or Portland? What, as if white people liberalism has worked out so well? No, that hasn't created the conditions that have, uh, that have uh, brought on all of this moral apathy that is responsible for the refugee crisis. No, that couldn't be it. At this point, I don't take it personally. They're, they're, they're flailing in every which direction, trying to figure out why they're dying. And, and they refuse to take responsibility. And your comment here is more proof that I'm not the only one that sees it this way. You're involved with it. You see what's going on. You're, you're an honest person. And so am I. And there are more people beyond just you and me making these observations. So there's truth to it. And it seems to be the nature of all politics in in Western civilization, what's left of it. Homosexuals can't have their own families, which is how most people satisfy their power, their need for a power process. So they get into politics. And this is why I'm becoming increasingly apolitical, because I see the kind of people that get involved into it and it all leads to the same place. Because their moral compass is broken. Because they don't, they don't go into politics for the right reasons. They do it to, to satisfy this, this sick thing that's, that's occupying their, their soul. And people who do get in po- involved in politics, they, they start identifying themselves as this ideology or that ideology. People who do go into it for the right reasons, they end up having to associate with the worst people. And, and they don't like how that reflects on them. That would require them to admit that they're wrong. So they become prideful and they go down with the sinking ship rather than saying I was wrong and I'm going to move on. But pride is too strong. People do not like to admit that they're wrong. And I'm no different than this. It's something I've, I've been learning about myself. St- I, I think about all the times where I get real angry. And I'm like, Why? Why did it, why was I angry at that? Why was my sense of self-worth tied up in that? Bad investments of energy. I truly appreciate what you do. You're literally doing God's work. Well, I I hope so. I, I really do hope so. Uh, I emailed this a couple weeks ago, but it was never right on the show. Oh, sorry about that. After listening to episode 21 of Common Filth Extra in all its intensity, something popped into my head. 
On places like 4chan or 8chan, you see people talking about their all their dysfunctional fetishes, implying any fetish is functional, and how much they love lollies and all the wonderful things they would do to anime characters or video game characters. This is especially prominent in the anime community. They tend to get defensive when people call them creepy or weird and typically say, it's just 2D, it's not real. While that may be true, I feel like a decent chunk of them would... Uh, the decent chunk of them allow that line to blur, or it even leads them to, uh, to getting into the utter depravity that is consuming child pornography. It reminds me of, me of how my mom used to always remind me of how to separate real life from video games. I found it foolish, but the older I get, I begin to see the concern in other forms of media. I also noticed that the, that the reprobate who was justifying child abuse to children in the thread posted a lolly anime character picture, which you might have missed. Yeah, I, I think I did, and, and thank God I did. I also saw a similar thing on a screenshot from Wizard Chan, where this treacherous uncle was suddenly admitting to his sexual attraction to his niece. My question finally being, is it a viable concern to be worried about such things? Yes. I want to believe that people can separate reality from fiction, but the more I see, the less I doubt that it's true. Well, why do you think virtual reality is making a comeback? It is this inability to distinguish fantasy from reality. It is this inability to separate reality from fiction. Keep up the good work, Juan. You make a la raza proud. Yeah, I can roll my tongue. How about that? Have I ever done tongue rolls? Before uh, that episode of Tumblristas. Arr! Yeah, I can do it. Uh, hey, CF, what's your opinion on germ theory? Here's a paste bin about it. Well, I'm not going to form an opinion right here, right now about it, but I will read the paste bin. It says, we have proof that toxo... Uh, is that toxoplasmosis? We have proof that toxo causes liberalism and evidence that it causes faggotry. Gay germ theory is the strongest candidate for the cause of human male exclusive homosexuality. It is currently being politically suppressed. Brilliant geneticist and evolutionary theorist Greg Gregory Cochran is currently the main proponent of the, the jerk gay germ theory. Read his thoughts on the topic. Let me reiterate the reasoning behind the gay germ theory. Exclusive male homosexuality cannot be genetic because the genes are responsible would not pers persist in the population. It's a good point. Human male homosexuality has an identical quin, uh, concordant, concordance rate of approximately 25%, another strong point against the genetic hypothesis. Pathogens are known to exist, uh, which can cross the blood-brain barrier in mammals and modify sexual behavior to the parasite's advantage, i.e. toxoplasmosa. This is fascinating, actually. And, um, I don't know, is, is this boring, you people, or should I keep reading? I'll uh, keep reading. Homosexuals exhibit behavior which seems optimized for pathogen distribution. <laughs> yeah, no shit. The average homosexual has a lifetime partner count of over 500. I insert Dragon Ball Z joke here. Homosexuals have rates of sexually transmitted disease that are far higher than heterosexuals. Homosexuals are prone to child molestation at a rate that is far higher than their percentage of the population would predi predict. So, geez, they're, they're, they're like zombies. If we're going to use that, since we're all obsessed with zombies, they're sex zombies. Uh, yeah, at a rate that is far higher than their percentage of the population would predict. Homosexuals commonly engage in waste product fetishism, a behavior that seemed, seemed optimized for pathogen distribution. Jeez, this all makes sense, doesn't it? Homosexuals are more prone to a full, the full range of mental illnesses, a possible side effect of the parasite. Well, if it's a parasite, couldn't there be an, an antibiotic for it? And if it's not a bacterial infection, isn't there something that, that, that you can use to treat it? Homosexuals report being sexually abused as children at a rate far higher than the rest of the population, supporting the thesis that childhood infection by the gay germ modified their behavior. Yeah, I've talked about that before, how they're all developmentally stunted. And you could observe this in their mannerisms, how, how, how they look. And, um, yeah, I'm, it would make sense that they, the, 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 uh, the germ would target younger people. Younger people get sick more easily. I mean, I, I can't knock on this, you know, the shitty Ikea wood here, but you know, I, I, I haven't gotten real sick. Like I haven't gotten a cold in like four years. 
And now that I've said that, I'm probably going to get one, but I, I'm more healthy now than I was when I was younger. Um, what else? I know of no alternative to the gay germ theory that explains many of the peculiarities of the homosexual condition. Hopefully we will soon identify this horrible pathogen. It is unlikely that we will be able to undo the damage caused to its victims. It will need to be permanently quarantined, but it is possible that some sort of inoculation might be devised. We know how rabies works. An infected animal becomes more aggressive prior to death. It will end up biting other animals to spread the infection along. This is an example of a behavior-modifying organism. What you don't probably don't know is that there are hundreds of other organisms that also affect behavior. A virus causes caterpillars to climb up trees. Then it liquefies their organs so the body disintegrates and the virus can be spread by the wind. There is an STD for grasshoppers that makes them more, more sexually active. In the days prior to experiencing the symptoms of the flu, the virus will make you more sociable so it can, trans, so it can transmit it more. Here's the real kicker, though. There is a parasite that has the ability to modify sexual preference. Toxoplasma gondii. If you've probably heard of T. gondii as the amoeba that infects cats, there's a lot more to it than that. Rats are a carrier of T. gondii. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's spelled G-O-N-D-I-I. When infected, a rat will be attracted to cat urine, making it more likely to be eaten by a cat, the intended host. How does it work? Toxoplasma alters the brain to make the rat sexually attracted to cat urine. Toxoplasma's ability to make rats sexually attracted persists even after the rat is no longer affected. That's right. A parasite has the ability to permanently alter sexual preference in its host. Dig deeper into the facts behind T. Gandhi and we uh, see one third of all humans are chronic carriers of toxoplasma. Oh my God, that's terrifying. Males with toxoplasma are taller and have more attractive faces, allowing you to have more sex and spread the virus further. I don't know. And see, <laughs> what, are we, what are we defining as more attractive here? I, I want to know that. It's like it, it, more attractive equals more alien looking, like the skin is stretched too tightly over the face. Toxoplasmosis increases the concentration of dopamine in the brain of infected humans. You will likely, you will become more likely to do risky, thrill-seeking behavior. Pause loads. Pause loads. Toxoplasma immune globulins are found in 9% of newborns in the U.S. Hmm, where have we seen this figure before? Oh, right. It's the same figure claimed as the percentage of homosexuals in the U.S. <laughs> Which, which that number is actually declining. You know, people are being, people are like, oh, we thought there would be more. Toxoplasma transfers from pregnant woman to their baby. Toxoplasma infected women have male son 72% of the time. Wow. So I guess, um, so I guess my mom did, wasn't infected by it. She only had a male, she only had, a, wait, male sons. Wouldn't she have a male son 100% of the time? <laughs> So you should just say males. She has a male 72% of the time. So my mom only had a, yeah, much less than that. If you haven't pieced together the facts yet, I'll fill you in. Toxoplasma infects the fetus of pregnant mothers, making the baby more likely to be male and permanently altering the baby's brain to create sexual attraction to men. You probably heard the false genetic hypothesis that claims that female siblings of gay men have more babies, meaning that gayness must be an advantage. Well, the sexual attraction to men. You probably heard the false genetic hypothesis. Oh, wait. <laughs> I just read the same line over again. Meaning that gayness must be an advantage. The gay gene has been disproven, but toxoplasma explains why the sisters are having more babies. The same toxoplasma that altered their brother's brain altered their brain to increase their sexual attraction to men. Homosexual men are having more sex than their heterosexual counterparts, spreading toxoplasma further. Use HIV as a proxy for how effective homosexual behavior is at transmitting disease. Homosexuals are 10% of the population, but account for 60% of new HIV cases. Well, it's actually lower than 10%, but regardless, it's it's disturbingly disproportionate. Which is funny because I see people like, oh, there's more gay weddings going on in Christian churches than pagan ceremonies. Proportionality. Oh, we're all we're all of a sudden uh, not so concerned about proportionality when when it works against us. Fucking retards. He's a, okay. In response to homosexuality, homosexual disgust, aka homophobia, has evolved as a means to avoid toxoplasma infection. The purpose of disgust is disease avoidance. You are disgusted at the sight of feces because feces have a lot of bacteria. Yes. 
You didn't need you didn't need to learn to avoid feces. It's just genetic. Similarly, homophobia was found to be genetic and also present in nearly half the population. This means that homophobia involved because it increases your Darwinian fitness by helping you avoid toxoplasma. That is all incredibly convincing, and I'm going to have to look into that even more now. That's fascinating. How do you find all these cringeworthy Tumblr pages? I have a burning desire to expose myself to raw toxic sludge because I hate myself. You'd find it on any social media platform that, that is pretty lax on its uh, enforcement of its uh, terms of service. Think of the worst things you could possibly find and just search away. Uh, Dear CF, how can I help my friend? He's 17 and is trying to repent for his sins, Satanism, etc. However, it appears he may be uh, possessed by demons. He came to me saying that he had legitimate satanic thoughts and that he didn't know what to do. I pray for him. Is there anything I can do to help him? Your friend sounds like a retard who fetishizes his problems, who thinks that his problems are actually a good thing and they're a pleasurable thing and they make him seem more interesting. So 17 year olds are. They haven't actually accomplished anything. So they're like, look, look how cool I am. I'm a fuck up. Because normal people, if they're having bad thoughts, they'll, they'll, if they're really feeling really bad about the things there that, that that's going on in their head, they'll tell somebody, you know, I'm, I'm having these things going on in my head. I'm having bad thoughts and they won't call them satanic thoughts. That's really stupid. Nobody calls their, their bad thoughts, their bad impulses satanic. This is a person who's just like, Ooh, I'm cool. Pentagram. Your friend's a moron. And it's going to take uh, life slapping him around a bit in order for for him to gain some sense about himself. What's your opinion on Pastor Anderson, Faithful Word Baptist Church, Phoenix, Arizona? I think he is the best preacher on YouTube right now, but uh, that is probably since I don't know that many. Um, there's an open air outreach, if, if, um, if that's the same guy, I've heard of him. But the problem with these, like, have you heard of, it's either, yes, they're good, um, it's either no, and I have nothing more to say. And if I have heard of somebody and I don't like them, I will probably talk about them. So not the first time I've been recommended Pastor Anderson, but noted. I stumbled upon a web page describing ways in which human sexuality slash sexual preference can be altered. It seems contributory to your cause. Yeah, that uh, that, that gay germ thing. Uh, and I originally read this as contradictory to your cause, and I was about to get all pissy, but um, that was actually when I first read it, like, when I was previewing uh, these comments before I was recording. But yeah, I'll check that out as well. But we have to move on. Hey, CF, the Christian population rising in China is something you already know. The problem is that Christians are being persecuted by the government for not adhering to the government's standards. The Pope is doing nothing. He'd rather let Europe burn. My question, is there anything we can do, Christians in the West or, West, or should we let things go like it did in Europe? Have it spread over generations until it is a part of society. It's old, but just want to know your thoughts on it. Also, Black Pigeon Speaks seems to share similar ideas to you. Do you think so? Again, somebody else I didn't hear of, so I can't say anything about them. It's, it's interesting, the question, what should we do? And... We should look at how Jesus planted the, planted that seed and how it grew. He chose very carefully the, the apostles he chose, and look how successful they were in spreading Christianity. They're, they're, uh, the, those under their tutelage, they trained them well. Christ, he was right. He, he chose all the right people. We have to take note of what Christ didn't do. He didn't come to earth and he didn't run for election. He, he did not become a a, a military uh, guy. He, he didn't become a general. He didn't he didn't become an elected official. He rubbed elbows with the average person. He changed hearts and minds by speaking, by by having these decentralized meetups where people would come and listen. He'd go to people's homes, talk to them. He did not change the world from a, a worldly hierarchy. He, he did what he did from the ground up. And you do that by influencing average, everyday, ordinary people. And that's what's happening in China right now. 
It's on course to become the most Christian nation in a, in a couple of decades. And it has nothing to do with what the government is doing. It's not the government enforcing Christianity on people. It's what is happening. This is happening because of what is occurring in the hearts of the Chinese. So my best guess as to what we could do in the West to make sure that seed keeps growing is to assist those who are at ground zero, influencing hearts, influencing minds of the average Chinese. You think about what Christ accomplished and how he did so through very humble beginnings. And and he was smart, smart guy that Jesus, look how successful he was. Do you like shooting? If so, what guns do you own? Well, let's not talk about shooting or anything that can be construed as violent on here. We all know that uh, the internet is full of too many people who are afraid of inanimate objects, so, which is a, a sign of uh, neoteny, I think. So we'll refrain from talking about guns and all that. It's, yeah. SCF, this is the 30 Years a Homo guy wrote, uh, who wrote to you many months ago. Since then, I have not looked back. I've become repentant and celibate. I'm considering pursuing Christian faith in a more formal context. So I've arranged initially to meet with a priest of a local Catholic church, a local Russian Orthodox church, and the local Church of England, and possibly a local Baptist church. I realize that the Catholic church is currently full, uh, is under full-on PC dictate. The COE, uh, the Church of England, in earliest childhood experience was initially positive, although in the current year, looking at their uh, their local website, it seems absolutely sold out to current PC dictate. The Russian Orthodox Church seems to have the essence and um, and is, as far as I know, not embracing the current same-sex marriage PC dictate. Any thoughts as to the preferable choice? Um, you know, I've heard, uh, we all know about the perils of the Catholic Church. I, I've not heard good things about um, uh, the Church of England. And, and you know, the, the Russian Orthodox Church, um, I, I know some Ru- Russian Orthodox, and, and they're, they're good, God-fearing people um, who, who, are, uh, who are skeptical of the ways of the world. But there are some concerns that people have about the uh, Orthodox Church, uh, what with their uh, somewhat pagan uh, pagan leanings because of the cultures they absorbed into it. But, you know, I don't know how far that goes. Just a uh, careful prayer, prayer and consideration. Who is ultimately who's, who's speaking the truth. You have to, you have to go with who is, who is, who is being the most truthful and, and go with that. So, and only you can figure that out. It's not something that I, that I can figure out for you. Uh, any thoughts on the UK's June 23rd referendum to leave the European Union and become more self-governing? Or is it in terms of demographics and degeneracy too late? I don't know. I, I don't know too much about the, the Brexit thing that's going on. It's very political and, you know, I don't do that too much here. CF, what's good in life? Um, a lot of things. Sunshine is nice. Um, birds are nice. It's nice to watch birds flying by. Uh, the laughter of a child, that's a good thing. Puppies, puppies, like literal puppies, puppies are good. Uh, lots of good things. Nature is good. Like the beauty of nature, the beauty of God's creation, that's good. God is good. The Holy Bible is good. All of God's gifts. And if you acknowledge them as such, ordinary things you take for granted become more beautiful. Like a sunset. You could see a sunset every day, but... You know, when the when the sun is just right, it's my favorite time of day. When it's just about set, only lasts for about half hour, forty five minutes a day. But everything is magical at that time, where the sun's just about to to be done for the day. I'm a bit late, but hopefully, Mr. CF will read this. Further to the Serbian dentist regarding intersex people, I think it's important to discuss the social or political reasons for ignoring the possibility of transgenderism being a mental issue, if not an outright mental illness. This contributor got me thinking to the similarities of transgenderism with other medical conditions, as although I'm not a doctor, I'm very interested in the freakish, mutated, and rare. There exists a condition called body integrity identity disorder, where sufferers genuinely believe that a limb or part of the body is not theirs or otherwise should not be present on their body, although that limb or body is often otherwise perfectly healthy. 
This can be for a variety of reasons, from sexual to neurological. The main point is that this condition is real and recognized. Sufferers can sometimes attempt to remove their own body parts and or claim that they have felt this way for a long time. It's easy to see the parallels between this condition and the stories of those who wish to swap their gender through hormones and surgery. However, whilst BIID is a rare condition relegated to scientific journals and shock articles, transgenderism is much more widely visible to the point of having a rights movement and its own in-group lingo, binders, T, FTM, etc., Whilst I don't have the detailed figures to back it up, I suspect that transgenderism will be far more widespread, but not as common as other mental disorders, such as depression or anxiety, experienced by 4-10% to of Brits during their lifetime, which I believe to be far more common than trannydom. This is not my main point, but rather that the removal of one's genitals to satisfy a mental impulse is becoming accepted, whilst plain removal of limbs for the same or similar reasons is not. I put this down to the placing of transgenderism under the LGBT etc. umbrella, probably due to the fuck you mother father, I'll change my gender if I want to connotations. From here, transgenderism is part of the golden calf of gayness. It cannot be criticized or examined scientifically as it's hashtag same love and so on. It's interesting that we view deviance as sacred, but um, <laughs> and, and anything that falls under that banner. I think, I think a reason why we accept this abomination as, as some great thing is because we've we falsely put sexuality under the same banner as race because race is something very important to us it's what our it's what it's the culmination of, of all of our ancestors into one person and that person is you and that 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 you cannot be changed the the lineage from which you are descended the, your genetic composition, it cannot be changed. It is something inherent. It says so much about you. History is imprinted into your genetics. That all sounds like it carries a hell of a lot more significance than I like to use my penis in the wrong way. Tee hee hee. But we consider these two things the same thing because of, well, civil rights and slavery. What the fuck does that have to do with anything? Black people were enslaved, therefore give out marriage licenses for du dudes that, that suck other dudes' dicks. Give me a fucking break. And this is the line of reasoning people use, if you can even call it reasoning. I just, I don't understand. I'd be... I'd be so insulted if I were a black person. People are comparing the the uh, the black history of blacks in America to oh gay people. Get people uh, being compared to a cocksucker, a same sex cocksucker. Uh, compare that to to black people. So insulting. The blanket acceptance of harmful practices as normal or constructive if they are part of a protected group is part of the the advancement of pause into the public consciousness. Whether it's the Jews hoping to fetishize self-sterilization in the superior white race, or else the result of allowing spoiled children to gain positions of power without ever being told to stop doing something harmful that feels good is irrelevant. I think that it is important to see the reasons uh, why certain behaviors are considered acceptable by the paused public, despite the, se the seeming lack of logic behind some of the more extreme movements. And transgenderism is the best example I can find as to why certain behaviors are off limits to proper scientific analysis, lest feelings are hurt. I'm curious to know what you think about the idea and look forward to, look forward to hearing your take on it. Thanks for reading and good luck out there. This is the end result of promoting dysfunction as anything but. And like I said, we need to disabuse this idea because racism, everybody's so sensitive about racism for no good reason. We equate sexuality and race. We think they're the same thing. Even though sexuality is the source of horrible abominations, where race, it's like you wouldn't... <laughs> I'm put it like this. Let's say a white guy visits uh, the grave of his black friend. Is a black friend's dead or a black guy visits his white friend? It's not shameful. It's not shameful to be your race and go go look at a grave. Go go pay your respects. Press F to pay respects. Haha, ha, that's a funny joke. You're all listening now. But 
Would you, uh, would you commit sodomy in a graveyard? Would you? I mean, we we do have a generation without shame. So maybe that's not out of the question. Maybe some people have done that. But regardless, we, we see the difference there, don't we? We are a very sick people. We need to be treated. And I, we're, we're refusing treatment. We think that everything functional is dysfunctional. Example of that, child r slash child free. We think dysfunction is function. And there's no amount of cartoon frogs and Twitter posts that can change that. The story you read last week about the teenagers who tortured a kid with a coat hanger while displaying a Confederate flag and making him quote, Moon Man song sounds like fan fiction written by the Anti-Defamation League. Just like the Luke Duke lacrosse case, it is probably complete fiction. Well, actually, the inclusion of the Moon Man KKK detail uh, is actually what convinced me that, that there might be something to this. Because I don't think that some autistic black kid and some people are like, what is a disabled kid doing on the di- football team? Blind kids have been on football teams. Have you, have you ever heard of that? There's a position in American football, for those of you who don't know, Long snapper. They're, they they hike the ball. They, they, they throw the ball between their legs to either the quarterback or the holder or the punter. And there was a blind kid on his high school football team who was the long snapper. He's their number one long snapper. He won the competition. He's better at it than anybody else. So yeah, disabled kids. And it's like, it's, am I really supposed to believe that some autistic black kid in rural Idaho, rural Idaho, uh, 300 people in the town where this happened. Am I really going to believe that that kid knows about Notorious KKK? Or am I going to believe that the uh, that his, uh, his teammates knew? I could believe that more than I could believe the autistic black kid knowing about uh, Notorious KKK. And I believed that in my reading of that story, I said, if this is true, and then I said whatever. I said, if this is true. I don't know if it's true or not yet, but we will find out. I have this in my notes that I forgot to talk about at the beginning of the show. I just couldn't find the time to think about it. I was watching TV real late at night the other night because I think that's where you see like the real... The, you, you find a lot of truth in late night television, especially in the advertising. Um, actually, only in the advertising. But it was, uh, <laughs> it was a commercial that came on that, that got my attention. You ever heard of Live Links? It's like this, this one... <laughs> This is a phone line, phone service. I guess it's phone sex. I don't know. The The commercial just had like some uh, Mexican chick gyrating in, um, in lingerie. I'm like, ooh, call now for some fun or whatever. And the and the commercial was shot in the 4-3 aspect ratio. And it was still on television. Real late at night, advertised, look, look, lonely, pathetic Pathetic guy watching late night sports television. Call for this number. We know you don't have a smartphone. You don't know what Tinder is. Come call. Call this sexy Mexican chick that's on your screen right now. Amazing that people still exist and this industry is predicated on preying on lonely, socially inept men who are too broke to own a smartphone. I'm amazed that these companies still exist. Oh, we charge two dollars or two dollars a minute for hot, hot, sexy singles are waiting for your call. They, I, I want to know who pays for that service and how many people are there. They, they, this company has enough money to advertise on television, regardless of the crappy time spot. They still have the resources to purchase television advertising. And who are the lonely people that are calling these phone sex hotlines? It's it's pathetic, but what can you do? What can you do about all the sadness out there? You can make a radio show. You can make an online radio show. That's what you can do. So I'm going to read this. (laughs) This was posted on the Apocalypse Facebook page, shared by them. And it's shared from some guy's Facebook account. I'm just going to read it because there's no real way to introduce this. He says... Asian. Asian girls smell like caramel or like some sort of burnt sugar. He's describing the scents of all the races of women. How does he get close enough to all of them to to have an accurate description of what they smell like? (laughs) 
<laughs> so he says, Asian girls smell like caramel or like some sort of burned sugar. Kind of like when your mom makes candied yams or you go into a bakery with maple scones. It doesn't surprise me that so many Asians make donuts. <laughs> They kind of smell like them to me. Either that or some sort of bamboo shoot or maple syrup. Southern Asians, like Indians, smell like, kind of smell like spices or acorns, although that could just be the curry. <laughs> uh, and it gets worse. How do you know? Like, you, you spend enough time smelling girls' hair while they sleep? Or, like, you're behind them on the bus and you're putting your nose right up against them? You creep. And then black African. African girls are pungent, kind of like Pekoe or frankincense. Is that, is that right? Pekoe or Peko? I don't know. Very spicy and thick. Leather and cinnamon also come to mind, but definitely thicker, spicier scents like cloves, saffron at times as well. I imagine sometimes those oranges that you stick cloves into as a kid that your grandma would hang from her rear mirror in her car or something. I've never heard of that. That just might be your grandma, dude. Polynesian, Melanesian. This one is tough, but especially hot Hawaiian Samoan girls smell like wax or those little candles you get that don't smell like a whole lot. Not necessarily vanilla, but something like a light vanilla mixed with some sort of flavoring syrup, mineral oil, witch hazel, rosemary, or other herbs come to mind. I just can't get the, off the waxing, though, for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> like having a hair maybe oh god what if this guy's like a serial killer he keeps severed heads of every race of girl and is sniffing them no that's terrible maybe this guy's not that bad but uh, or maybe he's just making the whole thing up and, and it's like some meta thing I don't know Latin American, obviously tomatoes and corn, but that's too easy. I get a lot of like floral scents, especially those from the Solanciae Solan family. Uh, uh, perhaps some sort of desert lily as well. Mexican girls or Central American girls sometimes smell like dirt or mud or like mud and clay. But brown clay that's clean, not really dirty gray clay. <laughs> <laughs> South American girls kind of smell better for whatever reason. I get like cucumber or cactus scents, sometimes a bubble bath mix or lavender. This is quite varied, but I get an overall like cured beef broth scent. <laughs> I've sampled women. <laughs> you sampled their scents. That and raisins are like the smell of tobacco, sometimes like eggs, but eggs before they're cooked. Uh... I feel like they cultivate their sense pretty well and are proud of it. So a lot of white guys aren't attracted to them because they're so used to girls smelling like chemicals or alcohol. They usually wear a lot of perfume, so it's hard to pick up on, but olives and piper is also present at times. European, yes, including white people from North America and Australia, New Zealand, wherever else we pillaged. White girls are interesting because a lot of us smell weird to other people, but that's due to a poor, usually due to poor diet. Wait, is this written by a, a white girl? No, it couldn't have been. It was some dude's profile. I, I could have swore it was a, a male. So white girls are interesting because a lot of us smell weird to, to other people, but that's usually due to poor diet, in which case they smell like hot dog water, Lay's chips, cat farts, or stale vagina. <laughs> white girls that eat well and don't take pharmaceuticals slash do weird drugs don't smell weird. Suppose that goes for everyone, but it's more common for white girls to take weird farms and eat preservatives. Easiest to go by subcategories. Redheads smell like dill and cardamom, sometimes like spicy fennel. Alpines smell similar, but some sort of bitter lavender or wormwood can be present if they're Mediterraneans. Blondies smell like talcum, albumin, or like some sort of random grain like quinoa or sometimes cashews. Eastern Euros smell like turpentine or a soldering iron. Also, this is not racist. It's just what these types of girls have smelled like in my experience. How are you getting this experience? You, sm you sample every woman. You're gross. You're gross, dude. Please don't whine about how you think this is racist, you lib crybaby. <laughs> so we have some anti-anti-racist signaling in at the end of there. All right, I think that'll just about do it. And the bookend, bookend this episode with the same uh, bookend at the beginning. Common Filth Extra, episode 24, available now. I give uh, an analysis of the Angry Birds movie, talk about Hunter S. Thompson, Richard Nixon, 
and the the most one of the more disturbing conspiracy theories that I'm interested in. And uh, Amazon affiliate link. If you're buying anything from Amazon.com, uh, click on the link below. It'll take you to the homepage. And if you add your cart, search for your item, add your cart, and uh, check out within the 24 hours of clicking that link. Uh, I get an extra percent, I get percentage, a small percentage at no extra cost to you of whatever you decide to buy of your total purchase. So, uh, do I have anything else to talk about? I don't think so. So we'll call it here. Thank you very much for listening. This has been Common Filth Radio, episode 92. I hope to, uh, hope to entertain you again and take care of yourselves. Be good to each other. Talk to you later.